in this video we are going to study regarding the design of one way slab so let us see the problem in the previous video already we have seen what do you mean by one way slab and what do you mean by two way slab so once again let me revise if if we are going to have that is ly by lx ratio if it is greater than 2 then we call it as a one way slab then we call it as a one way slab in other words what we can say is longer dimension if it is greater than 2 times the shorter dimension that is if you multiply here cross multiply that is 2 times of lx if the longer dimension if it is greater than 2 times of the shorter dimension then we can call it as a one way slab so first let us see this problem design a simply supported rcc slab for an office floor having clear dimensions of 4 meter by 10 meters clear span is 4 meter and uh, 10 meters we have the span so always what we can do is that we can have the ratio that is ly is always longer span lx is nothing but the shorter span then next if you take uh, 10 divided by 4 that is ly by lx it will be nothing but 2.5 uh, uh, we can have which is greater than which is greater than 2 so therefore this slab has to be designed as a one way slab then next with 230 mm wall all around so that is wall thickness is 230 mm adopt m20 grade of concrete we have that is fck is equal to 20 and fe415 grade hyst bars we have then next is let us uh, for office floor we can have a live load of 4 kN per meter square and floor finish of 0.6 kN per meter square this uh, shorter span is 4 meters with this setup let us try to design the slab first let us try to fix the thickness of this slab so first let us assume the effective depth that is this L by D ratio you can take it as 25 so therefore depth will be equal to span divided by 25 so clear span is 4000 divided by 25 so we are going to get around 160 mm this is nothing but the effective depth so let us assume a 20 uh, clear cover of 20 mm and uh, 10 mm dia bar so for example if this is the slab we have so let us assume these are the bars and uh, let us assume this clear cover as uh, 20 mm and uh, 10 mm dia bar so therefore this depth will be now we have to subtract this uh, so this uh, effective depth we got plus uh, 5 mm plus uh, 20 mm so therefore if you are going to add this remaining depth it will be like uh, effect overall depth will be 185 mm then next based on this let us try to calculate the effective span that is it is the least of uh, clear span plus effective depth or center to center of the supports so clear span is 4 meters effective depth is 160 mm if you are going to add we will get answer as 4.16 meters then next is center to center of supports so clear distance is 4 meters plus we have a wall support of 230 mm all around so therefore plus 0.23 we have so therefore this will be 4.23 meters so least of this means it is 4.16 meters so therefore effective length effective span is equal to can say it as 4.16 meters then next uh, let us try to calculate the loads first let us try to calculate the self weight of the slab that is equal to overall depth multiplied by the density of concrete it, this is kilo newton per meter cube this is kilo newton per meter cube multiplied by the thickness of this slab so that is we are going to get it as 4.625 kilo newton per meter square then next is we will have a flow finish of what you can say 1.5 uh, then next uh, uh, we are having a live load of 4 kilo newton per meter square we try to add all these loads that is equal to total service load will be equal to 10.125 kilo newton per meter square then next is we will try to calculate the ultimate load so multiply this by 1.5 so therefore 1.5 multiplied by 10.125 
so we are going to get answer as 15.19 kilo newton per meter square the next based on that uh, ultimate load let us try to calculate the ultimate moment and shear force so ultimate moment will be equal to w l square by 8 w l square by 8 so 1 divided by 8 is nothing but 0.125 we have so therefore 0.125 multiplied by ultimate load that is 15.19 multiplied by l square that is 4.16 square so we will get answer as 32.86 kilo newton meters the next is uh, shear will be equal to ultimate shear force that is equal to wl by 2 so 1 divided by 2 is nothing but 0.5 so 0.5 we have w is 15.19 span is 4.16 we will get answer as 31.6 kilo newtons then next let us try to calculate the limiting moment of resistance so as this is fe415 steel so therefore it is 0.138 fck bd square so mu lim is equal to 0.138 fck bd square 0.138 we have fck is uh, 20 b is uh, 160 and uh, d square we have once d is nothing but uh, 160 we have d is nothing but 160 square we have b is nothing but 1000 so here one what uh, you have to remember is b is equal to 1000 times is to 3 so if you want to convert it from newton meter to kilo newton meter multiply or uh, divide uh, multiply by 10 to minus 6 if you multiply you get answer as 70.65 kilo newton meters so if you compare this with this moment what we have so limiting moment if it is greater than uh, what you can say uh, moment which is coming then we can say that mu is less than mu lm therefore section is under reinforced section <coughs> next is uh, let us try to calculate the reinforcement so instead of this formula we can use another formula that is ast by ast is equal to 0.5 into fck divided by f of y into bracket of 1 minus 4.59 into mu divided by fck bd square multiplied by b into d so if you substitute the moment value that is 32.86 in that equation or in this equation if you solve this equation we are going to get answer as 531 newton per mm square so this has to be checked with ast minimum minimum uh, reinforcement required that is 0.12 percentage of uh, here we have 0.12 percentage of b into d capital d gross uh, 0.12 percentage of gross area b is nothing but 1000 why because we are considering a width of uh, 1 meter and we are designing a, a slab so d is 185 it will be around 220 mm square this is the minimum reinforcement so therefore minimum reinforcement it is 216 uh, or 220 mm square which is like uh, ast required is 531 greater than the minimum so therefore uh, for this 531 mm square let us try to provide the reinforcement so let us assume a 10 mm dia bar then next uh, we have to calculate uh, so in the beam used to calculate the number of bars but in the slab we try to calculate what should be the spacing between the bars so therefore spacing will be equal to 1000 multiplied by ast divided by capital ast ast is nothing but area of the bar which is being used that is 10 mm so pi by 4 into 10 square it will be 78.5 divided by AST. AST is nothing but 531. So it is 531. So if you simplify this equation, we are going to get answer as 147 mm. So that means the spacing required between the bars is 147 mm. So we can round it off to somewhat lower value. So we can adopt a spacing of 140 mm. And we can provide the alternate pent up bars at the support as said early in the earlier video the next is regarding the distribution steel so in the one way slab uh, in the shorter direction we are going to provide the main reinforcement in another direction what we do we are going to provide the distribution steel so we can provide the minimum reinforcement that is 0.12 percentage of gross area 0.12 percentage of b we are going to take it as 1000 multiplied by capital d that is 185 so you'll get uh, 220 mm square this is the minimum steel which has to be provided so therefore provide what you can say again we can calc uh, let us assume uh, 8 mm dia bar and let us try to calculate the spacing 
so it will be thousand multiplied by AST that is uh, area of 8 mm dia bar that is pi by 4 into 8 square divided by capital AST that is nothing but 220 mm square so if you simplify you will get answer as uh, nearly 230 mm square 230 mm square then next uh, uh, let us try to check for uh, shear so usually what happens that uh, shear reinforcement is not provided but let us check for this uh, tau v is equal to v u by b into d v u is nothing but the shear force that is 31.6 into 10 raised to 3 divided by 1000 into 160 we have so that is going to guess the answer that is 0 0.198 newton per mm square the next is let us try to calculate the percentage of steel that is AST divided by BD multiplied by 100 AST is 531 divided by B is 1000 D is 160 multiplied by the 100 so therefore it will be what you can say 50 percentage of that that is uh, 0.166 percentage of steel is 0.166 so permissible uh, shear stresses in the slab so for this we have to refer table number 19 of IS 456 so let me show you the uh, IS 456 that is uh, table number uh, 19 so you can see here here they have drawn one thing so that is uh, for solid slabs the design shear strength for concrete shall be tau c into k where k has a value given below we have to multiply this tau c by k so k they have given overall depth of the slab so our overall depth of slab is nearly 185 mm somewhere in between these two values so for that k value is 1.2 to 1.25 if we are going to interpolate uh, we will get somewhere around 1.2 so you get uh, somewhere around 1.23 so that is k into tau c 1.23 is k tau c is 0.293 so therefore we will get answer as uh, 0.36 newton per mm square so hence we can say that slab is safe in, uh, safe in shear then next is let us try to calculate uh, uh, check for deflection L by D max is equal to L by D basic multiplied by KT, KC and KF or F1, F2, F3 we used to write it is one and same so KT is nothing but uh, for tension this is for compression reinforcement and this is for flange section as these are nothing but one itself so we have to calculate the percentage of steel uh, AST divided by B into D multiplied by 100 so percentage of steel is 0.33 so for this percentage of steel we can calculate the kt is equal to 1.4 as we had earlier calculated so if you substitute that here that is l by d basic uh, this is for a centrally supported slab it is 20 multiplied by kt is 1.4 kc is 1 kf is 1 so that will be 29 then next l by d provided will be equal to uh, provided L is nothing but 4.16 divided by D is uh, 160 that is equal to 26 which is less than what you can say this value the maximum is 29 and we are getting 26 provided is 20 uh, what you can say 6 so therefore uh, this slab is pro satisfying the deflection criteria as well then next is uh, we, will, we have to draw the sketch we have to draw the plan as well as the longitudinal section so we have to show one slab you can see this is the slab which is having a overall depth of 185 mm which is supported on the walls of width 230 mm you can see both the sides we have the wall of 230 mm uh, the clear span is 4 meters the next is we are going to provide the reinforcement you can see the reinforcement bottom line what we have so as we are showing short, shorter span 4 meters so therefore what line we are seeing at the bottom so that will be the main reinforcement that is 10 bars at 140 mm center to center and we had calculated the distribution steel what circles we are seeing that is nothing but the distribution steel that is 8 uh, mm uh, dia bars at 230 mm center to center so what we do is that one bar we are going to take straight another bar we are going to do the bent up so if you see the plan uh, this is how we are going to provide the reinforcement one bent up we provide one straight we provide 
one bent up we provide one straight we provide one bent up we provide one straight we provide in this way alternate bent up bars we provide so that is what you can see it here one bent up we have the next is one straight bar we have so add to the opposite end we are going to do the bent up again here what we do bent up we provide the next is again straight again here we are going to do the bent up so alternate bent up bars we are going to provide so you can see here now what line you are seeing here so that is nothing but 10 mm dia bars in the plan you can see now these bars are main reinforcement this is the shorter span so therefore this is 10 mm dia bars about 140 mm center to center so perpendicular to this what circles you are seeing it will be seen here you can see now that is nothing but 8 mm dia about 230 mm center to center so at what distance it has to be bent up it is nothing but 0.1 l so that is nothing but if you calculate it is 420 mm so you can see now it is bent up at a distance of up to a distance of 0.1 l in this way we have to draw the longitudinal section as well as you have to draw the plan so here they have shown the continuation mark